Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming out today. We're going to be showing you Decel Hub, the leading platform to run venture capital firms. My name is Adeo Ressi. I'm CEO of uh, the Decile Group, which runs the VC Lab Accelerator Program. It also builds the Decile Hub platform. And traditionally, we've made Decile Hub available to graduates and people in the VC Lab Program. That's led to about 600 firms that use Decile Hub every month to run every facet of their venture capital operation. They raise money on it, they do deals on it, they do back office on it, pretty much everything. So today I'll be showing you the platform publicly for the first time in full. We'll be giving you an invitation code to go try it out. So this is the first time we're opening up the platform to the public. And then you're going to be able to really um, play around with it and use it to start uh, working to build a venture capital firm. So let me give you a little bit of background before we jump in to actually showing it. And um, <clears throat> the there there's the, the it's important to understand a bit of the history. So when we launched VC Lab. Uh, as an accelerator about three years ago. Um, it was part of a, a company called the Founder Institute. We said, wow, there's uh, great entrepreneurs everywhere in the world, but there aren't, aren't great VCs everywhere in the world. Maybe we can launch a training program for VCs and help create more VCs. All of a sudden, like it blew up, right? It got so big, we decided to spin uh, VC Lab out of the Founder Institute about two years ago. Um, and one of the first things that we did when we spun uh, VC Lab out of the Founder Institute is we used to train VCs and say, okay, if you need to share a document, sign up for something like DocSend. If you need to get a signature, sign up for something like DocuSign. If you need to get a pipeline, sign up for something like Affinity. If you need to do this, sign up for, and it was like a huge list. It was, it was insane. And so by the end of the program, uh, in the early days of VC Lab, the average manager might have 10 to 15 different technologies that they needed to use just to do basic operations of their venture capital firm, a digital signature, a file system, a file tracking system, a link tracking system, uh, some back office accounting stuff, CRM. I mean, it was really, it was insane. I can just keep going on and on. And then by the way, they needed things like Zapier and other stuff to have them talk to each other. And, and this is, by the way, traditionally referred to as the VC tech stack. And if you're not in the venture capital world, you can literally look up VTC tech stack. Um, and uh, if you go to the images right now, I'll share my screen here. I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's literally insane, right? So I'm sharing it right now. You'll get stuff like this, right? So you click in the 2021 VC tech stack. Like, I mean, what? Uh, all right, so, but you can see it over here. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six times three, that's 18, 19, 20, 20, 22 categories of tech in the VC tech stack in this little diagram with dozens of things in it. And there's lots of different diagrams. It, 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 it's, it's an absolute mess. And we said to ourselves, like, you can't actually build a VC firm that's successful when you're cobbling, when half your time is spent cobbling together software. And how this manifests is, I'll give you a simple example. Like, oh, I want to send an LP a document to sign. All right, well, you... Create the document in a document editor, which you need. You might have it in a file system, which you need. 
You might upload it to DocuSign, which you need. You might want to track the link. So you're going to use a link tracker, which you need. You might want to send it from your CRM, which then you have to set up and which you need. And so like just to say to someone to send a document to someone to sign, you had to be like, and then go to your link tracker and then go to this. And we're like, this is insane. This isn't, no one will ever succeed if like just explaining how to do the simplest thing takes multiple steps. So we decided we were going to build it. And um, we got very lucky uh, that we we brought on the team that built uh, the the um, legal Zoom back end. And for those of you that uh, know or don't know, legal Zoom is probably the largest legal automation firm in the world. It's enormous in the United States. It does some double digit, large double digit percentage of all legal work for small businesses in the United States. They have a very complicated system to do that. And we brought the guys on that built that system and we've created a vertical SaaS for venture capital that unifies all the pieces of that tech stack, which by the way, will literally cost you tens of thousands of dollars a year. A DocSend professional account alone is $2,000. Affinity is a few thousand dollars per head, okay? Then you add DocuSign, which is hundreds to thousands of dollars a year. And those three alone will get you to the 10,000 level. And that's not including Zapier, link tracking, everything, blah, 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 file systems, et cetera. So we said like, not only is it kludgy, difficult and horrible, but it's also expensive. So we just decided to disrupt the whole thing. So um, if everyone wants, you can go to desalhub.com and take a look at it. Uh, it's not the best landing page in the world, uh, but uh, you know it gives you a pretty good sense of, uh, we're about to upgrade the landing page because we're starting to let people use it, but that's gonna be uh, the front end. And then I'm gonna now show you what's behind the scenes. Uh, okay, so this is when you first log in to Decil Hub, you're going to be taken to a page that looks like this. This is the dashboard. You're probably not going to. Gonna... Whoop, if someone can be muted, thank you. You're probably not going to use this dashboard page too much, but it, I'll, I'll show you why it's kind of useful. Then I'll take you through everything and uh, and give you a great tour. So you you the one of the main things that Desol Hub has it are pipelines. So you see fundraising pipeline packs, files, et cetera, listed right up front. And one of the things that we've done is we said, you know, a lot of people are using it for fundraising. So if you want to, let's say, add a prospect, you can, of course, click right there, type their name. Um, it will allow you to add them, right? So if, let's let's add me. Right. Of course, I'm already in there many times. And then you could either pick one or add a person. Right. We'll go through this more. But one of the nice things right on the dashboard is if you're curious, you can hit learn how to and it will actually take you to uh, a tutorial to show you how to do stuff. Right. So one of the nice things about the dashboard is that, hey, I want to learn about fundraising. I want to learn how to get a pact. I want to learn how to deal with files. You can just do it directly or go through a tutorial, right? And so it's, that's a nice, and, and by the way, everything that you're seeing here is in a demo account. S sample fund is not real. Maybe there is something called sample fund, but it's obviously a demo account. So I'm not revealing any uh, secret information, private stuff, et cetera. So the nice thing about the dashboard is you can do things, you can see stats, but you can also learn how to do things by clicking the learn how to. Um, while we're on the dashboard, we've integrated possibly one of the most powerful AIs that I've ever seen. So what we did is we took custom training data and we used an open AI API and we've configured that API to only use the training data. 
So if I ask like, who is Taylor Swift, right? Um, it's gonna basically say, hopefully, uh, you know, I haven't asked in a while because I, you know, hopefully it will say, I don't know, good, it did. I can't confidently answer this question because the AI that we built for Decile Hub for venture capital only knows things about venture capital. It does not know things and it's not a bullshit generator. And because we're using the API of OpenAI, and we can actually swap in Claude or whatever um, LLM is best at the time, and we're only feeding it our training data, and we've configured it not to answer things it doesn't know. It doesn't hallucinate. It doesn't make things up. But my God, it knows a lot about venture capital. So what is a safe, right, is like maybe if you're like doing a safe, it will give you, and of course it can understand typos. So the the it will answer anything about venture pretty well. And in fact, uh, you could even say, what are common terms for a safe, right? And it will give you, again, pretty good answers to almost any question in venture. And if it doesn't know the answer, it will tell you. Right. And then if you don't like the answer, right, like this didn't really show me things. One of the things you can do is you can ask the community for a better answer. And then what it will do is it will pull pull up this and you can say, what are the common terms for a safe? And then we have a group of experts at Decile Group and VC Lab and Decile Hub that are available and they will literally answer any question that you pose to the community, usually within a couple of days with a lot more detail. And beyond just like VC questions, the AI, which we call Desol Base, can also answer any question about using the product. So if you're ever stumped, or you're not sure about something, you could say like, how do I upload a document, right? So you can literally, if you ever get stumped or not sure, just ask the AI and it will tell you, right? Navigate to files in the left. I'll make this a little bit larger for everybody. So literally, um, We've trained it not only on everything about venture capital, we've also trained it on everything about the product. So it should be in a pretty good spot to help you if you ever get stuck. And before I continue showing you around and get you all excited about the things that it can do, um, it's a complicated product, okay? That's part of the reason why we haven't released it before today publicly and we're only releasing it in a very small trial because it does everything that you will need to do to run a venture capital firm, replacing literally tens of thousands of dollars of software for free. And I think it's better than most of that software, but as a result, it's just complicated, right? There's no, and there's no, we try, we're always working to simplify it, but it is just complicated. So we've covered a bit on this dashboard and this is what you're gonna see when you come in, but let me take you through some of the different things that it can do. So when you look on your, you can collapse this or you can expand it, you're gonna have a, what we refer to as a left nav. And when you set up a venture capital firm and fund, you usually have three entities. You've got the management company, the general partner, and the fund, right? And this supports that. And you can see that here. So this is for sample fund one, but you might have different funds. You might have different SPVs. You might, so you can switch between different funds that you have by clicking this little switch entity thing here. Now, most of you will be working at one fund at a time, right? 
so you won't switch between anything. But as you grow and you add new funds and you have new entities and things like that, they will appear there and you can switch. Now for each of these funds, you might have a fundraising pipeline, et cetera. So these are gonna be for the funds. And then the stuff below will be for the firms. And this is your left nav. Now, the product is so complicated, has so much stuff. We've massively simplified the left nav. We don't show you everything that you can do. But if you're interested in seeing it, you can click this navigation thing. And let's say, hey, you know, it's not showing me deal flow, but I want to look at deal flow. So I'm going to enable that. I don't care so much about closing because I'm not closing. I'm mainly fundraising and doing deals. So I'll put, I'll adjust, I'll put fundraising and deals. Maybe I need or I don't need back office. So you can adjust your left nav. You know, I'm building a team. So I'm going to put recruiting. I don't need this. I'm working on a website. So you have a lot of options here to configure your left nav to make it whatever you need for you. Does that make sense? Right? So that you can build the tool around what you need to use it for. Right? So now I'm going to close and now I have fundraising, deal flow and back office, which are the things I care about, but I'm not closing. So I had closing, I put recruiting because I'm recruiting. So you build your left nav to what you need by hitting this navigation settings below, okay? So now let me take you through, most of you will probably, the there, Decile Hub is really great at a lot of different things and I, I'll show you a bunch of them, but it particularly excels at fundraising. It is probably the single best venture fundraising tool in existence today by a large margin, right? There's nothing even remotely close. So we'll go into the fundraising pipeline first. So you just click on the fundraising pipeline and you'll see it expands this stuff on the left. And when you roll over stuff, it pulls up a little black uh, explainer text to the right, manage relationships and commitments, add a limited partner. So if you're not sure what something does, it will tell you, okay? And so in that's the left side. And then in the center in this case, um, you're going to be managing LPs. And like a traditional pipeline, you'll have stages here. And you'll have different people in the stages. You'll have actions, next tasks, right? My next task is to call the prospect, confirm the meeting and take notes, send them an email, et cetera, right? And the cool thing about Desal Hub and why it's so good at fundraising is it comes out the box all set up with everything you need, all the stages, all the email templates. So all you need to do is just start adding prospects and working with them and putting them in the right stages and the emails and everything else is done. So look, um, let me tell you what a pact is and then I'll show you an example of it. So in the world of fundraising, um, with, with limited partners, it can take a long time to get commitments. It might take you one or two months for an LP to say yes. And then it might take you another- Hi, my name's David, another co-founder and CEO of Hunch. Hunch is a visual- Could close it, yeah. So it might take you one or two months to um, get a commitment and then another few months to close. So what, what you do is you have someone sign a commitment letter that they're interested to invest in order to hard circle that investor. And we call those commitment letters PACs and we have the whole system to sign and manage PACs built in. And I'll show that to you in a second. So that's what a PAC is. So here we got to get Matt who works at the company to sign a PAC. So we put him in the send pack stage. And so I need to send, and this is all pre-configured out of the box. And so we need to send Matt an email. So it says send Matt an email to get a pack. Just click that. Boom. Maybe I want to take a note. I'm sending now. 
uh, and and it will uh, uh, allow me to do it that way, right? So, but you can also, um, I, I uh, maybe I clicked the wrong thing. Maybe it's, uh, but to send Matt an email to, to send a pack, for example, you can go over here. There's lots of different ways, I'll show you. So then you can say, all right, I wanna send a packed email, boom. And it basically creates the email. It should have done it when I clicked the link. So I'm not sure what happened. I have to look into that. Uh, apologies about that. But here's the email that should have popped up. Uh, the problem with doing a live demo. So it fills it all out. It knows Matt's name. Matt, reserve your position in the demo fund. Matt, thank you for showing interest in the demo fund. As the next step, please uh, uh, sign, click below to reserve your position. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So it writes the email for you. And of course you can customize it, right? And you can even send a test email to yourself to make sure that it, it looks good before you send it to Matt. But it, it provides all that functionality. And in addition to that, by the way, if you scroll down, um, it tracks the link, right? The pack link, right? And you could say, hey, if someone clicks this link, do this action when they click the link. But if you don't want them to track the link to improve deliverability, you can actually disable link tracking. So it's very, very, very powerful as a CRM. And all the stuff that you need to do to fundraise is built in, right? So again, if I wanted to move Matt here to do the pact, or I want to get Travis to do the pact, they just move him down to send a pact. He'll pop down, do the same kind of thing, right? Now, um, so I'm just giving you a sense of the different things. You can play around with it, learn yourself. And in fact, when you sign up and onboard, it's gonna take you through a process to send yourself a pact and sign it by pointing little things out so you can learn the interface. But I'm gonna show you some little tips and tricks of things that you might not get in the demo. So there's a lot of fields in the pipeline, right? It's a it's a full-fledged, you know, rating, investing as, da, 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 uh, who's assigned on your team, right? Uh, who it was referred by, et cetera. But maybe you don't care about all that, right? So you can go over here to this gear and say, I really don't care about, um, uh, let's say, the contact dates, right? Investing as, I care about rating. I want to put rating all the way up top, right? Uh, I don't care who's assigned. And then you just save, and it will reorder everything, right? Into whatever you wanted to put first, right? So you can set your pipelines up however you want. And by the way, let's say you let, want to look at one and it's only just going to have, um, you put rating first, right? Uh, and you want to save that. So you hit a new view up here and you could call that view rating first, right? And so then you create, hey, this is my view where rating is first. Then you have a default view. So you could, based on what your needs are, you can build different pipeline views and quickly switch between them by just clicking. Now I wanna see rating first, click that, and it will. you can create these views. And as part of this, I'll just show one other thing. Maybe you only wanna look at a specific stage. Like in this rating first thing, I only care about people who are doing packs. I don't care about anyone else, right? So I save that. And now it will only show rating first with people who are in the pack stage. So it's a very, very powerful CRM. And when you click on a person, by the way, you get what we call the um, slide over and it will show you an overview of the person uh, with more information, email, et cetera. I wanna show this, which is pretty cool. If you, let's say our out of the box CRM doesn't have a field you want, maybe it's birthday, right? So you could say, all right, I wanna track 
birthday, right? It's going to be a date, right? And uh, I don't need to put a description. Show the field when creating. So you can add fields very easily to prospects in the in your in your pipeline to track whatever you want. It will appear. You can sort by it. You can build views, etc. Okay. Um, the people usually belong to organizations. This person's part of Southwest Seed Fund, which is obviously imaginary because it's demo. Another cool thing is you can see all the activity. I remember I just moved him to send Pat, right? It will show you emails. It will show you the email that was sent. It will show you links clicked in the email. So you have full tracking of all the history. You can take notes, right? Add your notes and you can even upload files and things for the user. So the pipelines are very, very powerful. And they're this, each pipeline is different, but follows this UI paradigm. So you have a fundraising pipeline, a deal flow pipeline, a recruiting pipeline, a connectors pipeline, and each is unique, but they all kind of look like this. So let me show you some unique things and then I'll show you some other really cool stuff. So, um, uh, before I go to unique things, I'll show you two other two other things that are common in pipelines. So all pipelines have stages. As I mentioned, we pre-fill the right stages for each pipeline. So I can expand all the stages, collapse all the stages, look at a stage. So let's say in the meeting stage for an LP, if you get an LP to the meeting stage, you automatically set the probability to 10% here. Right, You could edit that and say, you know what? In my case, it's not 10%, it's 5%. So I'm gonna set the probability to 5%, put it here, save it. And now when you move someone in the meeting stage, their probability gets set to 5%. But remember, these are all set up for you already. So you can edit it if you want or leave it the way it is. It's pretty good the way it is because people have closed over a billion a year in money from LPs using the presets, okay? So they're not bad. So after you set the probability, you send a meeting request, you do a meeting follow-up, then you confirm that the meeting's complete and take notes. And if it goes well, you move them to the material stage. If it goes badly, you move them to unresponsive, right? It's all set up for you. Similarly on the PACT, send a pack, send a reminder, blah, blah, blah. So all the stages are set up. Not only are the stages set up, but the emails are written. Here are all the emails written. And you say, well, these emails are pretty plain van vanilla. So let's say you want to fix the meeting setup. Here's meeting request. You just click on it. It shows you the email. You can edit it. Um, Make it whatever you want. And all your variables to use in the email are here on your right. So if you want to add a variable in an email, you like give them your fund one or your domain or whatever, do in three days. So all the email, you can look at what these are. So the URL to do a pack, you just click that. It pops right in the email template. You save it and the email template's been edited, personalized, et cetera. By the way, you also have a default signature that you can just pop it. Most of them will use your default signature. Um, and I'll show you quickly where to edit your default signature. Um, if you click on yourself on the top right, you're going to see uh, edit profile over here. My name, last name, photo, Calendly link, and about. And here is your default signature up in the top. So again, back to the fundraising, all pipelines have stages, all pipelines have emails, the stages and the emails are all set up for you. And then it's really, if you want to customize them, you can. But as I mentioned, each uh, of these unique pipelines have specialty things that are unique to them. So in the case of fundraising, it's PACs. So when you click on PACs, 
um, you're going to have all this stuff to get signatures from limited partners committing to your firm. And you'll get a link. So if I click that, this is what it looks like, right? Hello, choose an amount. And you, it, it's right. And you're like, oh, that's kind of boring. So then you go over here and you can customize it, right? So you go over to pack settings, right? You can pick the amounts that you want to get. You go to pack content instead of saying hello, you could say welcome, right? And then when I save that and I go back over here, now it says welcome, right? So you can create a completely customized experience. Now, remember what I said before, a pact is a commitment by an LP to invest in your firm in the future because you're collecting commitments and then you finish your documents and you send your documents when you have enough commitments and you finish getting them edited and created by lawyers, et cetera. So um, you'll send someone a link. Uh, it's just your subdomain.desalcub.com slash pact. It gives you custom stuff too. And then you they your limited partner will get something like this. You can change the image, change everything on this page, change the amounts, customize everything. They'll pick an amount. They'll fill in their information as a limited partner. They can pick what they are. By the way, this stuff gets carried that they filled out to all the legal documents and everything because it's a unified system. Then they hit, uh, oh, I'll hit as an individual. They hit review and sign. They get the agreement, which you can also customize. They sign. Uh, and then if I go back over here, um, to the packs, right? It will say, I think I just signed for 250,000. Reload. <clears throat> or maybe it was 100,000. So yeah, because I just signed less than three months. So this was, so I signed for 100,000 right here and boom, it appears, right? So um, it shows, by the way, here, packed aging. Now it shows that I signed a pact here, but because this is integrated, right? I can see the document here. I can also see it in the pipelines that we showed, right? So if I go to the default view, it will see, oh, Adeo Resi signed a pact, right? I can click here and actually see the pact that's been signed. Again, and this is one of the advantages of everything being integrated because the signature, the pipeline, all this stuff is tied together. So you can very quickly move between things. Now, I want to go and show uh, some a, a couple other pipelines, a couple other features, turn it over to questions. So deal flow again looks like the other pipeline, except now instead of a person here, because you're investing in startups, it's going to, the, the thing you're looking at is the startup name, not the person name. You're not investing in John, you're investing in Acme Inc. But again, it has many of the same features, the customizations we all came through, but they're slightly different because we're tracking different things for deals. One of the areas that, the, that if you're a uh, VC, and you're investing in companies, you do what are called deal memos. And to the best of our knowledge, we're the only system in the world that has deal memo, a deal memo system integrated, right? Like everything else. So you want to create a deal memo for one of your companies, which is almost all VCs do deal memos. It's and, and LPs require you to do deal memos. And so now, so you say, hey, I'm working on a deal memo for this company, Facebook. You go in and you can build a deal memo. You can rate the deal. You have questions you answer. And what's cool about deal memos, just to go back, so you can edit stuff here, but going back to here, if you go over to the settings, you may say like, hey, for me, the founder and the market is more important than team velocity. Founder market and traction are more important than team and velocity. So I just reordered it. 
You can add things to rate the deals on. We co This comes also configured with standard stuff, but maybe, you know, what are top three needs of the business? I don't need, you can reorder, reorder sections, uh, delete things, add your own questions. So you can build your own deal memo framework or use the one that comes out of the box. Going back to the just deal memo example here, and because everything is integrated, <clears throat> like let's say I want to export uh, the deal memo and share it with an LP, right? So I hit export and share. Maybe I don't want to share the ratings with the LP, so I'll unclick that because they're private. And then I want to hit publish deal memo. Because we have our own DocSend, our own DocuSign, our own CRM, all this stuff, it will actually put it in a data room for you that's completely protected, right? Here's the face, uh, and you can then share this, which is our file management system with the LP, right? And you'll track no one's looked at this, but it will track what the LP looked at, how long they looked at it, et cetera. So that's one of the major advantages of integrating all these different things. So let's take a look at files. So we covered some of the pipelines just to give you a sense. There is a fundraising pipeline, deal flow pipeline, connector pipeline, which are contacts in the venture industry. We've got a recruiting pipeline to add people uh, to your team. Uh, and then, so there, there are a bunch of different pipelines. There's a closing pipeline, et cetera. So pipelines are sort of a key piece of the product. Um, but we also have other key pieces like files. So one of the biggest issues in venture is you don't wanna send things through email because that's totally insecure. Basically, you're guaranteed that the Chinese and Russians will look at whatever you said, all right? In addition to that, uh, you want to track. Do people open the file? What pages do they look at, et cetera? So we have a whole file and data room system, and it comes with preset folders. We've added a lot of folders here. Um, and let's say you want to create a new folder, and let's say you want to make it a a uh, classic data room, you can add the uh, preset folders and it will create an automatic data room for you to share with limited partners. But it does come with a bunch out of the gate. So let's like, let's use, let's go into like a demo PowerPoint. Uh, we've uploaded a PowerPoint here, right? As you can see, there's automations. There's all sorts of cool stuff that you can do. Then I can click on it and it will show me uh, who looked at what. So, and then I can say, oh, John Smith went in here and John only looked at four pages. He looked at the first page for eight seconds, the second page for two seconds, the third page for 16 seconds. So it has all that features built right in. And then let's say, um, if you wanna say, and, and by the way, you can see what John looked at, right? Uh, here, let's go back. So you get, it's got the full docs and, and functionality built right in with greater security linked to the pipelines integrated with everything else. And so you can also do things like, um, <clears throat> automations, which are pretty cool. Ah, of course it wouldn't be a live demo if we didn't get a 500 or some sort of error somehow. Uh, so I'm kind of happy that happened. Uh, I, I'm going to try again, but we might get another error, which is okay. We can just keep going. I'm not sure. We, we're, we're working on stuff all the time. Uh, let's see again. Who wants to bet? Do you, let me reload. Do you think we're getting another error? Maybe, maybe. Oh, no. Okay. So I will say this, we're always building and running the product and making new features and functionality. So if you do get an error, I'll show you in a moment how to report it. 
But more importantly, try again, because sometimes it could just be you did something beforehand that messed it up. I actually hit the back button a bunch of times to get back to it. So it probably lost my state. Uh, and, and so just try again. So what I did is I went back, I clicked it again and it worked. Uh, so if you do run into an error, refresh the page, try again. And, and I'm more than half the time it will work. And if it doesn't work, let us know. We'll, we fix it really fast. So what's really cool is every time someone looks at a, a, a doc, I could say, if someone looks at the doc, put them into, let's say, the limited partners pipeline and add them to the material stage. So what you can do is because everything's integrated, you can start doing really neat things where now when someone looks at this doc, they automatically get put in the fundraising pipeline in the material stage because uh, the system's completely integrated. In addition to that, you can do some neat things like, um, let's say you're sending someone uh, a fundraising deck and you want them when they're looking at the deck, if they really like it, they can click a button to sign a pact, to commit. So you could say, show a packed banner. And you can even pick the wording of the banner to show them. And then whenever they look at the file, right? So we're going to save this. Um, <clears throat> let me see if I preview. I may, it may not be able to do this for me because I'm logged in. But let's go into the file. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, because I'm locked in, I logged in, it's not going to show me uh, the, the link. But if I were not logged in as me uh, and I were another user and I looked at it, it would have a link at the top that says sign a pact based on the wording that I've chosen. So again, it's really neat <clears throat> to have all these integrated features and functions because it allows you to do things that you can't do with any other products on the market today because you know they're disjointed. You don't have you need a link tracker, a document viewer, a CRM, a document signer, and they don't talk to each other like this product does, like Desol Hub does. Okay, let me show you a couple other really cool things. Um, <clears throat> there's so many cool things, guys. That and I want to take some questions and give you. I don't even know where to begin, <clears throat> but. Um, Mm, let me do two, two, I'll do three cool fast things, okay? And I'm, I promise you this is the tip of the iceberg and the iceberg is awesome. So you can build a website, da, 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 but I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm gonna show you a couple other, three more cool things. So forms, forms are awesome. So you can build your own form for a company and you can also see it in a number of different places, but you can build a company form. So let's say, um, and the limited partner form. So let's say you're doing, <clears throat> you want a form for prospective investments to submit stuff to you, right? So you can go over here <clears throat> and build a form. What problem are you solving? You can have them upload a deck, all this type of stuff. And then you get this form here, right? That you just made. And whenever a company fills this form out, they appear in your deal flow pipeline. You can have a similar form for LPs. You can have kind of forms for anything, actually. You can build a form literally for anything. You want a form for to do an agreement. You want a form because the forms can include digital signatures. You want a form for anything. But in this case, here's an example of a form to submit your startup. And then all the information collected from the form will be in your pipeline automatically, right? Which is super powerful if you need to get lots of information from a startup to make a final investment decision 
and you don't want to be emailing them and sending them reminders, just send them to the form and it all goes right in the pipeline. It's right there for you to review. And as I mentioned, you can completely customize this form. So required, unrequired, delete, you can add new form fields, et cetera. Um, you could say, what's the question? Is it a text input, an email, a number, a phone, a URL, et cetera? So it's really, really easy for you to build this type of stuff uh, to do. So that's one thing. Another cool thing I want to show you, and again, there's, uh, I'm going to show you three. So that was one of the three, three more things, I should say. We have a total event management system, right? So you can build events. And then um, what happens is when someone signs up, okay, ha, I know the event system works. Second 500 errors. I should get some Easter egg bonus points. But uh, uh, the whole, I, I, I don't want to risk that. This is an event in the past, so that might be part of the reason. But you can set events up and then run your events. So it's like a free event, right, if you will. But when someone signs up for the event, they automatically go into the right pipeline. So when a limited partner signs up, they go into the limited partner pipeline. When an entrepreneur signs up, they go into the deal flow pipeline. So you can do your own event series and then populate your pipelines automatically as people register for the events and you're getting leads easily with you doing no work. The final thing I wanna show you um, is the back office. So we run the Decile Hub. Now this is an enabled out of the box, but if you uh, contact us and work with us, you can have the whole fund admin, again, fully integrated to the experience out of the box all your key numbers. And one of the cool things, let's say you don't know what RVPI is, right? So again, back up to that AI that's always available at the top, you can say, what is RVPI? Boom. And right here, without hiding the page, it will pop over and explain exactly what RVPI is. So again, if you ever are confused with the interface or not sure what to do, your AI answer is ever present at the top, available to help. And as part of all this back office, it does all the reports, everything for you, but it does some really cool things that again, no one else is really doing, like capital accounts and managing. So it manages all the investors in your fund. And one of the hardest things to do as a manager is manage your LPs, do capital calls, send out all that stuff. Doing capital calls is super easy. There's a capital call area here, start a call, boom, it pops up all the amount. Let's say you need 1,500,000 to do a thing. It figures out what everyone owes. You scroll down, you hit start capital call and it's done. It sends everyone an email. It does everything about the capital call you need done in one click. And, and what's even cooler is that all of your investors have a, a dashboard, right? That when they log in, they see how sample funds doing, they see their tax documents, if there's a capital call, it says there's a capital call. It has all the wiring instructions, everything right there for them. And what's also really neat, by the way, is if they've invested in two, three, or four funds that are on Decil Hub, all those funds are here and they get consolidated reporting, which is not possible in the industry today. So all of the funds that they have are at the top and they can see how all of the funds are doing and then they can click on an individual fund. I don't have an uh, individual. I, don't, I wonder if this works. Yeah, coming soon. Yeah, so we have, this actually works for some managers, but not, not for everyone. 
that you have to enable this long story, but they'll see all their funds here consolidated. They can click on a fund and see things. Um, I wanted, I, I, you know, and again, I'm not even done because, you know, you can look at the investments, right? You can add the valuations, right? Uh, you can add funding rounds, open, close. So I, I'm just scratching the tip of the iceberg with what I've shown, but I wanted to give you a bit of a flavor and here's what I'm going to do for everyone today. Uh, rat. If everyone's ready, <clears throat> when you go to decilhub.com, I'm going to take a few questions right now. It's going to ask you for an invitation code when you sign up. Now, if you're in a cohort, you can't use this invitation code because we'll give you a special invitation code for if you're accepted or you're in VC Lab, you have another invitation code. <coughs> Excuse me. For everybody else, uh, the invitation code, <clears throat> delay, drum roll. Do people here want an invitation code, by the way? Do, any thumbs up? No? Yes? One yes, two yeses. Anyone else? Three yeses, four? Okay. Uh, it's discover. Simple, lowercase. And I'll log out and show you where you put it. And then we'll put some quick questions in there. So if I log out, <clears throat> it will say sign up, invitation code, discover. Put it right there, fill it out, get started. And uh, this is our little gift to you. I only ask one thing. I may email you in a few days after you sign up and say, hey, uh, can you give me some feedback? We know the one area that I would say the product is not perfect right now is onboarding. It's not bad, but it's not, it's not, it's really designed for people that we're working with to use. So you are the first people that are going to get to, to use the product that have not been through VC Lab. And there's about 600 firms that use this every month to run their firms. And you will be the first group to use it that have not been through the program, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna maybe reach out to you and ask you some questions. So please do me a favor. If you get an email from me asking you about how the onboarding experience were, how we could improve it, please uh, just tell me the truth. Right. Do you, lots of people love it, but if you don't like it or you find it complicated, we'd love to know. So let's say. All right. So do you guys have questions for me in the last? I can run a little over, but do you guys have questions for me? Thank you so much, Adeo. It was great. Thank you. Of course. Um, Adeo. You said you were going to tell us about the parts that are going to be charged in the future. Um, yes. Yeah. So the back office bit that you saw that right now, it's, you don't have to pay for it. You, you, we only sell it, so to speak, if we power your back office, right? So um, at some point in the next few months, we're going to roll out, tiered uh, pricing. They're all, most of what you saw will always continue to be free, but we have three package levels. One is um, just below 10,000 a year. The next is um, I think 25 and 40. And when you get in the 25 and 40, you're getting a bundled back office solution and at the 10,000 you'll get access to the back office access to a lot of things uh AI advisor and other things that but most of what you've seen except for the back office will continue to be free Emil yeah thanks Adele. um quick question on the any potential sort of um integrations with LinkedIn uh, oh or, yeah 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 I didn't okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, dude, as I said, I can't show you at all. So we're all, sure. there is APIs and it's already integrated with Google and Microsoft and stuff like that. LinkedIn doesn't allow for integrations in any meaningful way, but we actually have something really cool 
where you can, um, <clears throat> cause LinkedIn doesn't like its data being whatever, but we have like a, 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 a Chrome plugin that if you're on someone's LinkedIn page and you want to add it to hub, you just mm -hmm. hit the Chrome plugin. It can actually hit any page with a person's information on it. And it will pull out the person's information using AI and add it into the database for you. So there are APIs uh, and there's preset ones. You're integrated with the Gmail suite, you're integrated with Microsoft. And then where the API stuff is a little ghetto, like LinkedIn, we have um, a Chrome e extension that's a plugin that's coming out. The Chrome plugin's coming out any day. It's working now, but it's not. We have to get approval from Google and that's going to happen any day. Tujar? Hey, are you? Uh, my question here is, uh, so whatever you showed us, I think it's geared towards the legal structure of the U.S. Uh, oh, this is used I all around the world. To, uh, so I'm planning to have one fund in India and one fund in, in U.S. So can we, would we be able to manage these two funds on the same platform? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not U.S. focused at all. In fact, the, the, the platform is used today <clears throat> by 600 firms all around the world. Um, and so uh, it's definitely not U.S. centric. And what will happen is, is you add funds, which could also be SPVs or whatever. If, if maybe you weren't here in the beginning. You can literally just switch between them <clears throat> up here. Oh, this is real data. I got to switch to a, a fake data fund. Uh, <laughs> no one show you real data. All right. So you just hit switch here and you can switch. Uh, no problem. Thank you. Other questions? Don't be shy. We got a couple more minutes. We can go a little late. Anyone? All right, guys, we'll get started. Enjoy. And hopefully this is a beginning of a love affair with amazing software. There is in the decile base, I'll show you one last thing, uh, and then, then we'll wrap. <clears throat> Over here, on the side, you're going to see decile base. And when you click into it, uh, the first thing you're going to see at the top is hub support. If you ever run into a problem, uh, you can just go into the hub support community and say, hey, I am having an issue and just explain whatever issue you're having. And um, <clears throat> you'll see what happens is we fix stuff on the platform super, super fast, right? We're building things super fast and we fix things super fast. So we're literally like, if you even request stuff, hey, it would be really great if we could do this. The team in some cases will do requests in as little as a day or two. And as maybe it will take sometimes weeks if it's more complicated. But the reason why the product is so feature rich and full is because people, users like you, have told us what they want and we built it, right? So we've essentially built around what users want. With that said, everyone, I am late for another meeting, which is okay. This was fantastic. You're the first group in history to have access. So enjoy everyone. We kept this group a little small because we, we have we have 400 something people on the waiting list uh, and you are the first. Enjoy. Have a great afternoon, morning and evening, wherever you are. Bye guys. <laughs>